I started in 1947 at the age of 14. And I started serving my time in a monumental yard in Mount Jerome Cemetery. It was known as Mount Jerome Monumental Works. My late fa father was foreman there. And the stone trade has been in our family for hundreds of years. When I started serving my time first, we had um, an anvil and we had a hammer and we used to make our own tools. But what we used to do was we'd have to make the splitter, so we used to make the head of the splitter first. And so is that you don't have to temper the head, you leave it soft because if you, if you temper it, it'll break and it'll fly. So we used to make the head of it like. So then what we would do then later on then we'd, we'd get it on the anvil again and, and get a shape on the bottom of the like this. And as soon as we'd have it shaped like that, would it be, it'd be fairly accurate now, it'd be about that width. In order to sharpen it to get it really sharp, we'd have a Yorkshire slab, it's a sandstone. And you'd come up with a very sharp edge on it there like that and then you away and cut your letters. But there are a very limited number of men in Ireland who hand cut nowadays. And this is why people ask me to engrave headstones, engrave especially lead, lead inscriptions because they're not familiar with them and they've never learned how to do them. And this is why I'm trying to now and transfer my skills to somebody else. And uh, as I said to you, Cahill Farrell and down in um, Kilbride Memorials, he's, he's learning now and hopefully he'll um, succeed me, hopefully. These stones were made by hand. We'd get in a slab, a square slab, and then we'd, we'd uh, make this side. There wouldn't be, that'd be rough. You'd have to make that side, make both sides, and then the, you'd sketch, put a, a compass on it here, and you get you get a circle on it, and then you walk from here, and then you get this scotia here, and um, then you'd make it with the mallet and chisels. There was no such thing as machines those days; it was all done by hand. All the all the rubbing of the stones would be done by polishers, and all this all the masing would be done by stone cutters and all the engraving will be done by monumental sculptors. But um, sandblasting has come in in a big way and the majority of men, our majority of our monumental yards do sandblasting. There are very, very do, few are, do hand cut letters anymore. It's, it's more expensive, much more expensive to do them by hand than it is with the sandblaster. If I go to an engraving inscription on a headstone, I try to keep the inscription uniform what's on the headstone, but I try to beat it. I try to engrave it that bit better, that it'll stand out that bit better. I'd never walk away from a headstone and say, I'm ashamed of that. I'd be proud of it. And that's, that's the, I have pride in my walk. I did call to a person one time. They rang me and they said they wanted to talk to me about a headstone for a Sutton graveyard, which is a flat slab, three foot by two foot. And I said, fair enough, I'll do that. So I went down to see the lady anyway and rang the doorbell and she threw me down the key and I let myself in and uh, went upstairs and um, having spoken to her for a little while, she asked me, what would I recommend? Anyway, I said, I'd recommend this black granite headstone. Now I said, would you like to do the inscription? I said, would you like to put in loving memory of my darling husband? Oh no, she says, oh no, she says, he was only a bastard. And she says, the only reason I'm putting a stone is I didn't want to leave him in like an unmarked grave like a dog. So she said, just in memory of his name and the date of death and just R.A.P. at the bottom, she said, and that's all I want on it. So, and that was the end of that. So I had to be cautious after that what I suggest to people and what I recommend. So I'd have to know where I'm going before I suggest anything. Put here 
to commemorate people who have um, done work, charity work, and um, done a lot of good stuff around the area. Um, they also, when they put the name on this, the majority have a little tree planted somewhere around the area here. You may, if you look around, you can see um, there are trees, stake trees, and it's to commemorate uh, these people. I originally uh, erected this uh, many years ago, and they, now th that it's full, they intend to put another one just up around the back on another corner where the people who come in, and I must say, it, it um, gets a lot of attention from the local people and visitors. They think it's a great idea, and um, I do too. But I have engraved every letter that's on every side of this, and, um, and please God, I'll be around to engrave a few more on the next one, um, assuming they get another one. I have a grave, I suppose you'd say I'm morbid, but I have a grave out in Kim Mechanic and I have a stone on it and I'm contemplating putting an inscription on it. And I'm just wondering what the hell I'm going to put on it, but I want to leave as little as possible for the engraver who's going to put the rest of the, the date on it. I want to kind of get my, my own craft into the stone. Love, love is Big, big word. Yeah, love will play a very prominent part on my headstone. I'd love to indicate to people how important the word love is. Sorry about this. I feel very strongly about the word love and I'm definitely going to have an epitaph I'm trying to think what way I'm going to put it on the stone, but it's there for perpetuity and it's there forever. And I hope people take note of it and um, live it. Sorry about breaking down, but yeah, live and love. It's very, very important.